My name is Jamie Wright, and I am the Sherpa and Shop Hills Community Manager, Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Rogers. I'm a Sherpa consultant at SharePoint 911. I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm a SharePoint MVP, and I've written a couple of books recently that, are, that you already have on the screen. Um, I love, I'm not a developer, I don't write code, but I love doing um, a lot of things just kind of out of the box functionality with SharePoint data view web parts, workflows, info paths, and um, I just recently wrote a post about um, SSRS. I actually think SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Service, is a lot of fun too. So it's another one of those no code things. But um, yeah, hi, good to be here. Thanks, that we have. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's John White. I'm a uh, SharePoint architect with a company called Unlimited Viz, uh, north of the border uh, in a town called Kitchener, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. We specialize in business intelligence, and that's about all for now. Yeah, I'm a SharePoint MVP, um, and I'm also a Microsoft VCSP, and I work for our COVID as a SharePoint architect as well as the enterprise search engineer. And you can see the um, the book that I co-authored last year, and actually this year uh, there is an um, administrator's guide on 2010 is coming out, and um, I contributed a chapter to that book. And yes, we'll be speaking with my with a colleague of mine. I'll be speaking at the uh, SharePoint Saturday in Philly this Saturday. Our COVID, Microsoft Go Certified Partner, and specializing in SharePoint Enterprise Search. And if you have any questions about either of the two, you can always email us at info at or tweet to us at Alcobus New York City. And this week, a lot of movement in uh, this week in terms of some updates and um, the next generation of, of SharePoint and Office 365. Well, I'm sorry, it's often. So we wanted to kind of look back at what what happened with our SharePoint 2010 and Office 365 when when it came when it came on board, and then try to figure out you know what we want to see in the future and and what the little underlings that they're talking about um, that's going to happen with the next generation of our SharePoint and Office. So obviously, I, I looked up and I tried to find the biggest things that were uh, changed with SharePoint 2010. And they're listed there. I was hoping that our parents can talk a little bit about uh, each of these and kind of tell you um, how this, these changes have helped them with their um, development and also um, what they're looking forward to in the next in the next generation. So starting with the, I know. Okay, um, I was just going to say that. I mean, I think that people, it's been something definitely to get used to. So I think that people are still getting used to it, but you know they did introduce it in Office 2007. So just in general, I think people do still get lost a little bit when you know in SharePoint you have to remember to kind of look up there at the contextual ribbon and kind of pay to you know remember that the menu is going to change depending on where you are, and remember that there are tabs up there. So I still think that there's still a little bit of a learning curve, but in general the population. Um, I think has gotten used to it as a concept. Cause it, I mean, it's, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, so um, it's it's kind of everywhere. So it kind of forces them to, you know, recognize it and get used to using it. And it's an Office 2007, just not SharePoint 2007. Oh, so okay. people going from Office 2003 to Office 2007 was a huge change and a big deal because people were having to relearn a lot of things about how they were. All these years we're used to using office programs so I know that the big company where I used to work they they were not rolling out 2007 anytime soon when I left in about 2009 just because of the pushback and because of the training issues and things like that with a complete different interface that it introduced and then Daniel asks does anybody use custom actions that you that you can create an SPD I think you can call them from the ribbon I've used the custom buttons that, you know, the ones that you create from SharePoint Designer. You can go to, like, a list or library in SharePoint Designer, and you can create those little custom, um, what are they called? Custom actions? <coughs> are they called custom actions? Anyway, it's that little box at the bottom right when you're, when you're in SharePoint Designer. And um, I've done that a handful of times. So you can make those buttons either 
you know, do run a workflow or uh, open up a different form and different things like that, and you can customize what, like, pictures are on the button. But I haven't done it that often, just a handful of times. Again, and a lot of people were talking about the initial um, aspect of, of SharePoint 2010. When you use this... I don't see people using it that that much. I mean, I see people importing all their user profile properties, but just, mm -hmm. frankly, I don't see people doing, like, a just regular customers that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't do a ton with social interaction in there. Not that I can tell, at least. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what the general, yeah. I, I was just going to jump in. Just I, I, as a user, I, I think it's still suffering from perception issues. Um, although I, th I think that's, that's, that's changing. There's, there's a number of uh, evangelistic folks out there that are, that are preaching it and, and, and making a dent, but I don't think it's being used anywhere near its, its capacity yet. Right. I have to agree with John. Can you hear me, Denise? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I have to agree with John. Um, one of the biggest problems is the perception of social networking and the differences between social networking outside the firewall, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and what is really social networking within the firewall. So there are a lot of, I agree with John, a lot of people, and actually I'm one of the people who is trying to break this cliche look on the social networking as such as, you know, a lot of companies think or, you know, CTOs, CCOs, they think that it's a time waster simply because they only put it in the context of a Facebook. But I think, you know, I, I kind of do see that within this year, this perception is going to be breaking a lot within the companies. And even now, a lot of companies are already realizing that the social networking, once you put it in the context of a business process or um, a specific uh, business function, it, it can be actually really invaluable resource in terms of, um, you know, kind of informal knowledge base, in terms of um, in terms of a resource that actually can uh, point you how a group came to a specific decision, which will be very important in terms of, um, you know, knowledge building. This is just one of the things on the social networking. Is it? Daniel Westerdale just said, I heard a rumor that Microsoft was looking at an enterprise Twitter. Maybe that is what is needed in business. What do you guys think of that? I think there'd be value in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that it could be valuable. I mean, imagine you're getting these updates on the side of what uh, people are doing and what they're working on, and you can get that um, immediate uh, response from people saying, Hey, you know what? I I can help you with that. Or oh, that's a good idea. This is what we're working on on this side, especially in the large organizations. Um, and also can get a, a oh, an ad metadata to tweet. I don't know how how would that work? That's that's a hashtag. Oh, well, okay. Um, so we're going to move on to um, SharePoint Designer and templates and web parts, which um, kind of speaks for itself. I, I know that Laura. Um, this is kind of like your thing. And um, what would you say was the improvement of SharePoint 2010 in, in, in those aspects? Uh, <clears throat> this web parts, uh, they changed the, uh, they introduced the XSLT list view web part. So instead of having to use SharePoint Designer, if you wanted to customize a, a list view and then having to create a data view web part, and then every time you edit it, having to actually edit it in SharePoint Designer, um, your access, you can just open any regular list view in SharePoint Designer and edit it in SharePoint Designer, you know, add conditional formatting or tweak it, whatever you want to do, but then you can still edit that view in the browser just with a regular edit view setting and, you know, add or remove columns and things like that. So that was one of the major things they changed having to do with that. Um, they introduced a few new web parts, like some of the social stuff, like the Noteboard web part and and the cloud the the cloud web part. I mean, I'm sorry, what's it called? Tag cloud, <laughs> tag cloud web part. Um, 
And and then, you know, just a couple little things like the little the image rotator web part. But um, the main difference that kind of affects me and just how I work is, is the XSLT list view web part and how you can still do the old school data view web part. Um, but uh, it's a it's a completely different thing than that out of the box, just XSLT list view that you can edit live, you know, just on the pages. And I did a little YouTube, a little screencast one time, like explaining the difference between the two one time. My, my primary use of designer was typically around web content management. Not a whole lot changed. I mean, uh, cosmetically it sure did. Uh, one of the big things is you, you can create uh, enterprise content types uh, with SharePoint Designer in 2010, and that certainly wasn't available in 2007. So that's a big plus. And uh, Brandon says that his use was customizing the item style about XL. All right. So um, mm -hmm. we're moving on to search, which uh, I'm going to give the floor to Natalia for this one. Okay. So are we still talking down about Office 365? I presume so, <laughs> right? Because trying to, you know, combine, talk about those. Well, there is a big difference in, um, you know, just SharePoint 2010 search, meaning that um, 2010 search on premises or 2010 search in Office 365. So let me start with the disappointing part. Office 365, unfortunately, um, does not include SAS, and overall, the search capabilities are not as open as they are in, for example, on-premises SharePoint 2010 search. And I know Microsoft, I'm kind of glad that Microsoft stopped a little bit trying to convey some of the timelines in terms of when specific functionality is going to be released, because I remember in even um, starting with DPOS, uh, yeah, starting with DPOS times, Microsoft has tried to convey, for example, yeah, in the second quarter of the next year, we'll add such and such functionality. Now, I don't see them doing it, and I think which is good, because it's better not to get everyone hopes up and when, when nothing happens. But I'm truly hoping that soon, Office 365 will, at least in terms of search capabilities, it's going to be as full as on-prem, or at least even anywhere close to as, um, as full featured as uh, SharePoint 2010 search on-premises. But search, yeah, I love mm. search. SharePoint 2010 search, even, even just, you know, taking SAS out of the picture, SharePoint 2010 search has tremendously evolved, um, you know, considering the search functionality in 2007. Because, and now what we're seeing, literally almost any client who we work in, if they have a mature 2007 environment, and mature, I, I don't mean mature, I should say probably full blown or large scale 2007 environment, the first thing is that they say search doesn't work. And unfortunately, that was the truth in 2007. So this is why, you know, there are many other ways of getting search, uh, SharePoint search even with the year 2007, but yeah, I'm actually pretty excited about search and its, you know, capability of uh, tweaking the relevancy and it, it's awesome. You know I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> we'll keep moving and uh, we'll talk about SharePoint Online and that that's one of the ones that I am a little, I always want to know a little bit more about it because everyone is saying that it's it's going to be great. As of right now, it needs to um, have some tweaking. There's some things that you can't do in SharePoint Online. But um, just wanting to know, like, the overall feedback, and I think that that's one of the places where everyone is kind of looking forward to the next generation of, of, of SharePoint Online. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'll, I'll jump in. I, I think it's pretty solid the way it stands. I don't really see any reason to wait. Um, there are a few things that are available in Enterprise SharePoint that aren't available online. Fast, obviously, is one of them. Uh, it's a question of your requirements. Um, external data access is, is another. I mean, there is the BCS capability now, but that's one of the few. There's also the inability to get customizations up there in a, in a big way. But if uh, SharePoint out of the box does the job for you, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty solid. We've chosen to run our business on it, and we're SharePoint experts here, so 
that should say something. I mean, I don't have to worry about maintaining our own environment anymore. I let Microsoft do that for us. Our our business requirements around SharePoint are, are fairly straightforward. We do all of our development uh, using a product called CloudShare. I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but uh, uh, and a number of other cloud-based solutions. We don't actually have any investments in servers. So if you're if you're looking to reduce I mean, your your physical investment, if you're completely distributed as we are as a business, um, SharePoint Online is. Uh, is a very, very capable tool. All right, so in all of that, um, these are the, the, the new things. So I know that a lot of people have upgraded or they decided to stay with, um, you know, SharePoint 2007, maybe wait for the next wave. Um, how, how do you choose whether to, to move or go or to stay on time? <laughs> <laughs> Move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's. I think that's well, that's it, it in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, one, one thing I can the throw out there is cool. upgrade. Oh, oh, just go ahead, Laura. Cloudshare is pretty cool. You might want to explain to people what Cloudshare is. It's really neat. I've tried it once or twice. Cloudshare is outstanding. Um, I have two Cloudshare environments. Um, one I use for my, my development effort um, and ad hoc things, and the other I use for a, a demo environment. What it is is uh, for a base price of I think it's about 50 bucks a month, you get a certain amount of resources, and I think it's something like 10 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 10 processors and 300 gigabytes of storage. You can divide that amongst six networked machines. Um, the other nice thing about CloudShare is there, there are about, I don't know, 30 predefined templates. So if you wanted to go, run out there really quickly and see what SharePoint looked like running on SQL 2012, there's actually a template for that. So they're, they're uh, on, on the case. I've just been um, collaborating with uh, a guy named Chris Riley. He's kind of their head evangelist on setting up an ultimate SharePoint development environment. That consists of a... Uh, Two, uh, well, a, a two-server SharePoint farm, one with apps and one with just a regular front end, and basically all the uh, all of the development tools you can eat all pre-installed. So you can go to CloudShare, say I want to add this into my environment, and it just spins up those machines in a matter of about ten minutes. Um, too good to be true from a pricing standpoint. I can I can imagine everybody screaming. The uh, the the little catch here is it goes to sleep if you don't use it. So after about uh, after about an hour of inactivity it will shut down and go to sleep. So you can't really use it in production environments, but it's a great development uh, resource and uh, it's a great um, uh, demonstration resource. We're just about finished setting up all of our complicated BI scenarios on a, on a, on a CloudShare with a fake company. And we have actually managed to connect the CloudShare environment to our real Office 365 environment. So we have all of these fake users in there that have real email accounts and real link accounts. So. It's uh, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty solid. So if you if you need uh, if you need to test things, uh, if you need to do development, it's a great way to edit servers without having to invest too much in physical technology. 